So how will the GOP capitalize on these 23 outgoing Democrats so they can actually retake the House? House Minority Whip Steve Scalise joins me now. So, Congressman, I know that you see the data, you see the polling, right? Do you see a red wave coming for Republicans in 2022? Hey, great to be with you, Sean. And what you see on the ground is a lot of energy and enthusiasm on the Republican side. You saw it happen in Virginia, but even in other states where you saw kind of the preview of what could come next year. I think it's a lot like 2010, the year that you were elected to Congress, and we flipped 63 seats from Democrat to Republican in that big wave. I think, you know, 63 might not be the number, but I think you're going to see a lot of seats competitive. And as you were talking about, there was retirements. The real retirements to watch, Sean, are swing district Democrats that are announcing that they're retiring. Stephanie Murphy was mentioned. I think that's a seat we can flip in Florida. In your home state of Wisconsin, Ron Kahn was one of the first people to announce that they're retiring. We've got a great candidate, Derek Van Orden, who's been out working hard, and I think he can flip that True. seat. We have great candidates all across the board. It starts with great candidates and a great message. People don't like this big government socialism. They're rejecting it in every state, from blue states to red states. But with great candidates, we have a great fundraising advantage moving forward, and we're not going to slow down. We're going to be working very hard next year, not only to show how bad they're doing. People already get the inflation, the spending, uh, and all the crazy policies. Uh, but also, what are going to be those bold conservative items? We're going to be rolling that out next year as well. So, so Steve, you just mentioned the, the cash, right? So we all know that in campaigns, it takes money to win. You, be, you have to you know, put ads on TV. You, ha you have to get mail. Um, and if you don't have money, you can't actually get your message out. How, do, how are Republicans doing right now compared to Democrats on the cash front? Well, Sean, we've been breaking records and outraising the Democrats almost every month. And by the way, they're in the majority. They have the House, Senate, and White House, and we've been outraising them almost every month this year. You're seeing people come in and donate money in large numbers, who in some cases who never did before, because they're scared to death about the future of the country. They don't want America to become a socialist nation. They're tired of all the spending that's jacking up inflation. Uh, and it's not just big donors, by the way. We're getting record numbers of small donors, people giving $20 a person. You can go to stevescalise.com and give $20 right now. It's going to go to help fire Nancy Pelosi and help us win back the House. We're seeing records being broken on fundraising, I think, because people are excited about our great conservative candidates, the prospect of what we will do to reverse this big government socialism we're seeing. Yeah, I think what's interesting is there is a lot of small dollar contributions that are coming in in the uh, five 10, you know, $40. But let me ask you about this, because um, I, you look at the failures of Democrats, whether it's the border or crime or Afghanistan, inflation, energy. I mean, there's not really any successes for them to run on. And so when you hear them talk, they, they'll say the salvation for our, our electoral chances in, in the midterms in 2022 is we have to pass Build Back Better, the socialist massive spending package. And frankly, I mean, I, I, I look at that and go, are, are they blind? Do they not see that the American people don't want more borrowing and more spending and more programs? They want to be able to buy food at the grocery store. They want to be able to fill up their, their, their car with gas and not get gouged. I mean, it seems that they're completely out of touch with the American people. They're incredibly out of touch, Sean. And you saw it in the exit polling in Virginia. You know, and Youngkin ran a great race, Terry McAuliffe. When he said parents shouldn't be involved in their kids' education, that was a bellwether. He's not the only one, by the way. That is kind of the mantra of a lot of these big government socialists. It's about government control. But Democrats, a week after the Virginia election, passed the $4.5 trillion bill. I mean, they, they won't stop spending money. And they, everybody knows it's driving inflation. And what is their answer to keep trying to spend more money? At least in the Senate, Joe Manchin said enough is enough. They won't even listen to him. They're calling him every name in the book. Uh, they just want they want power. They want control over people's lives. People just want freedom. It's why they're flocking to the states like Florida and Texas that are open and they're fleeing in droves from states like in New York and California and Illinois that are shutting everything down. You know, Congressman, I, I think that it's, it's great to run a campaign that says I'm just not a Democrat right now and that can work. But you do have to have an agenda to run on. And, and the one of we support freedom. We support individual choice would be a successful mantra for Republicans to hit across the country as you come into the midterms. But listen, thanks for joining me tonight. I appreciate it, Congressman. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.